Hi, Year Tens. I wanted to talk to you about your investigation because with so many of you who've been away and some of you who've been a bit confused and now I'm away, um, I want to make sure that we can get through this. So it's about eutrophication of waterways, which is when nutrient-rich runoff, nitrogen, gets into a waterway. Um, algae grows because it's, it uses the nutrient to grow. And then when all the algae dies, um, it gets decomposed by, by bacteria, funguses, whatever, and it, it sucks all the oxygen out of the water and that's what causes fish kills and things. So we're going to simulate that. Um, so I have my nutrient-rich water here. There's a bit of sugar in there. I have my fungus in here. This is yeast and it's going to suck all the oxygen out of the water when it grows and I'll know the oxygen's gone because I've got this indicator that I'm going to put into each test tube, methylene blue, um, will tell us when the oxygen's gone. So there's a lot of factors that might affect how much, um, how bad an algal bloom is. You know, the pH of the water might have something to do with it, the um, amount of nutrient that runs off, the amount of water that's in the pond, the, how much the water's moving. But we're going to look at temperature. So we're going to try and find the temperature that the yeast is going to grow the fastest in. And we'll know we've got the fastest temperature because it's going to suck up the oxygen the fastest. So I've got a test tube. I'm going to put some, some of the sugar water in here. Now, I know most of you chose not to use sugar when you did it in class. Um, I did offer it to you, but I think... Um, I think it might help because that is the food that the yeast uses. So I'm going to put my water up to here. I'm going to put the yeast up to here. I'm going to get this test tube to the temperature that I want it to be at using my beaker of water on a laboratory hot plate over here. When it's at the right temperature, and I'll know it's at the right temperature because I have a thermometer which I'm going to put in there. When it's at the right temperature, I'm going to take it off. I'm going to put one drop of methylene blue in there give it a little shake, and I'm going to time it until the colour disappears. Okay. So let's just get started. Now, I put the marks on the test tube so that I'm making sure I put the same amount of water into each test tube because you don't want to change too many things at one time or you won't know whether your results are accurate. I didn't have a measuring cylinder, which you were using, so I'm just going to do it like that. And I'm holding it to eye level so that I know I've got the right amount of water in. And then I'm going to put some yeast in there. All right, there it is. Um, I might see what temperature it is to begin with. And all I've got, I don't have the thermometers from school either, so I've had to put it up quite high up the test tube so I can get this one in. This is my, my grandma's old mercury thermometer. Um, so see the silver in there? That's how you read off. It's really hard to get, but you can get the right angle and you can read off the temperature. There it is. Um, so I'm going to put that in and find out what temperature this is at. And it says 22 degrees. I think that's a great starting temperature, 22 degrees. So we'll just get that one going right now. Put the methylene blue in, get my timer ready. I'm only going to use one drop so that I'm doing the same thing to every test. There it is. It's in there. I've got a little stirring rod here. Start the timer. That 
and I'm going to watch and see how long it takes for the colour to disappear. Riveting, isn't it? Now the optimal temperature was somewhere in the mid thirties and apparently at 25 degrees, it's not gonna happen very fast, which is what I'm seeing. So that's expected. Um, so this first one's gonna be long and boring, but hopefully the next one will go a bit faster and I'll pause the video so you don't have to watch me doing all of it. Um, we'll just finish this one and then I'll pause it and I'll do the next one. I'm just going to pause it anyway. Oh, hang on. Yeah. So there it is at four and a half minutes. It's kind of still going. Um, I'm going to stop the timer and call that more than four and a half minutes um, because I'm getting bored and it's going very slowly. So while that was going, I got another one ready. There it is. This one, I'm going to heat to 30 degrees. So I'm going to chuck it in, put the thermometer in first. It will tell me where the temperature is. Can't see it. There it is. Number set 20. So I'm going to put it in here. It's going to go up to 30 and it'll move up pretty quick, I reckon. There it goes. It's at 20. 20. Now I can't see the scale there. It's there. It's there. The water's not very deep, so I'm it's taking its time getting to the right temperature. It's, uh, can't tell. 25. And it's just about, just on 30 degrees. So I put my drop of blue in. Shaky. Get in there. I don't know if that's a proper drop. Just want a quick look at there. That's better. All right. Let's see how long this side goes for. And I'm going to write it down. I'm calling that done. It's three and a half minutes. So that one was 30 degrees. So I've got the next one ready. And I might send this one up to 35 degrees just to see if we can get some more action. Um, so normally it goes in. This is the one that's really hard to read. I see it now. I want it to be at 30. Reading that again. Oh, 
All right, and that one's 35 degrees and I can see already that it's going faster. Um, so you get the idea, right? The thermometer goes in the test tube because you're measuring the temperature of the solution, um, not the temperature of the water in the saucepan. Um, you need to, when you, when you write this up and I'll get the rest of the results for you in a minute, um, you need to write the method um, that you can use, you can write the method that I used here because this is the one that I've got to get some data for because most of you won't be doing this anyway um, now. So you need to write down all of the, when, when you talk about variables, what was the thing we changed? And what were all the things that we decided to keep the same? Um, what the things that we tried really hard to keep the same, like the amounts of stuff that we used. Um, <clears throat> so you can you can graph the um, the time taken against the temperature. So the thing that you set, which is temperature, goes on your x-axis. The thing that you're measuring, which is the time taken, goes on your y-axis. Um, you should be able to come up with a graph. You can talk about the trends. Um, you can, um, and then when you're in your evaluation, you can write down all, all the other factors that might have accidentally got in there and, and had some kind of effect on the experiment. Um, you know, that yeast has been sitting there slowly. So every time I do this experiment, I'm using a yeast that's maybe just a little bit older than the one that I used previously. Um, the, the methylene blue, you know, a drop is not a very accurate measure. So there's that, um, there's that, problem as well so you can talk about ideally the best way to do this in your evaluation um, I want you to to write your um, write a method write down the variables what are the things we changed on purpose what are the things we tried to keep the same what is it that we measured and don't just say time one word answer is not good enough you need to say time taken for a certain thing to happen, so for the colour to disappear. This one's coming up for three minutes and it's not quite, we haven't quite got it yet. I can't remember where we were up to, but I'm just experimenting away here. So for 22 degrees, I got more than four and a half minutes each time I did the experiment. I did it three times. For 30 degrees, I got three and a half minutes, three minutes 20 and three minutes 42. You should be writing this down so that you can use it to do your graphing and data. 35 degrees, I got around three minutes. I got 257 and 248 at exactly three minutes. 40 degrees, I got two minutes 30 and this is 41 degrees and it's going a lot faster. I'm not up to one minute. Um, I'll give that just a little bit longer and I'll give you the rest of the results that I got so that you can start processing that today. All right. So at 40 degrees, I've got two minutes 30. At 41 degrees, I've got a minute 16, a minute 30 and a minute 38. And at 43 degrees, it started taking longer again. I've got two minutes 20 and two minutes 30. My thermometer doesn't go any higher um, than 45 degrees. So I can't do higher temperatures to see how slow it goes, but it feels to me like it went the fastest at about 41. So you can have a go at graphing that and see if you can figure out where the optimum temperature is and do some of your writing. And hopefully I'll be in there on Monday to help some of you out. If you're going to be at Try a Trade next week, um, just message me if you need some help with that. Um, due date, I can't remember what I told you, but we'll make it the end of next week to give you some time to get through it. All right. 
have fun.